Welcome back to S TV. And over the course of the weekend, our third Coles Summer Super Series, the Jandicott Airport Track Classic, in perfect conditions, five World Championship qualifying marks, eight personal bests, an Australian record, and a wonderful night in perfect conditions. Matt Lynch of Athletics and Track and Field, and it just leads us into and continues to wet our taste buds for what's going to be a wonderful, not only 2019 towards World Championships, but the Olympics next year as well. Well, it was good to finally have, like, the summer really stand out yeah. for the Summer Super Series. Obviously, it's been raining in Canberra and Sydney, but Perth, yes. uh, it made me want to move there. It was, it was amazing. They put it on for us, and obviously it showed with the performances, yeah. How'd you find the time zone, the daylight savings, and all the rest of it? You say you want to move there. Now, the track and field was outstanding, but there's a couple other things. That it, it was rough. On you. With that 800 you were talking about earlier, that yes. was run at 12.30am uh, for the mm -hmm. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, so it was rough, and I got the red eye back, and oh, <laughs> Sunday was hard. All right, we spoke about Sasha Zoya last week, and we know how incredibly talented this young man is, and we shouldn't have any real surprise that last Saturday night he broke the under-18 Australian pole vault record as we see it here. He's up and about, and he's a man going places, or a should say a very young man going places, but somewhat very fast. Oh, that was amazing. And that clearance of uh, 5 metres 40, beautiful. And to also have the, you know, now old, world, uh, old Australian yes. record holder, Paul Burgess, that's him there, give him a big high five. Cleared it by five centimetres, and well, by a lot more than that, um, and had a great crack at the world under 18 best at 5.55. It went up to 5.56, and that was probably a 5.56 clearance. Unfortunately, with pole vault, you can only jump when the bar's up there. But I, I think that could go maybe the next comp. If he's doing pole vault at nationals, watch that for, to disappear. And just more evidence there to Paul Burgess is a much better bloke than you and I, because we would be filthy <laughs> if our record got broken. But uh, <laughs> definitely right around his young people. If we're just not just going to talk about that, we're going to go to long jump as well, because the women's long jump was outstanding, and two athletes athletes we expect to have a big 2019 and of course towards Tokyo in 2020. Yeah, Brooke Stratton, Nara and Nang, we did preview it and they were two of the main ones up mm. there and mate, they, they put it on show on for us. Nara started off with a, with a 670 and just the next round, 673, added five centimetres to a PB. Well, it was already a PB with a 670 and there she goes. She's got the qualifier. 6.72 is the qualifier. And it's that extra speed that we talked about now. She's one of the fastest runners. Well, she is the fastest runner in Australia right now. And she's obviously translated that off the board. And not only that, but Brooke Stratton, she wasn't going to go down without a fight. She's dropping it right on that qualifier, 6.72. And bang, they're hopefully both off to Doha. Huge efforts by both of those two women. They're going to continue to push themselves as well, which is a great thing for the, the competition and the event here in Australia. And in the men's side of it... Oh. There was an impressive performance. You tell us about the performance and I'll tell you what something is wrong going <laughs> forward with the unfortunate fact of how far he did jump. Mate, Darcy Roper is an absolute talent. Silver medal in 2015 yep. at World Youth, bronze at 2016 mm -hmm. World Juniors. You know, he's, he's been finding his way into the senior stages as they do, but really this year, after his 8.20 windy in Canberra, he's done it again. He's jumped 8.32. Wind assisted, yeah. <laughs> so unfortunate. It was stronger early in the evening when they jumped. It did lighten off, but came out with a with an 8.13, a legal PB, adding 12 centimetres to his best, even through another 8.11 in there just for good, for good fun. How that's not a world qualifying mark stuns me, though. Now, 8.17, you were saying, is a world qualifying mark. You know what 8.17 probably gets you at a world championship in Olympics? Oh. Definitely a final, <laughs> yeah, and most probably a medal. Oh, Am easily. I Am I being too sitting in the grandstand, you know, picky to say that is a extremely harsh mark for a world qualifying mark? It is tough, and it's one of those events where you know eight seventeen might be the qualifier, but to get into the final, it might just be a bad day for jumping. Yeah. And if you look at he jumped eight thirty two, second was seven meters sixty, mm. so it was a rough day for jumping for everyone else in the field, just not for Darcy. Remarkable. Anyway, he will he will get there at some point. I yeah, I think so. No doubt as well. And of course, Matt Denny, who we spoke about last week, uh, back on the national stage last weekend. What'd you make of him? Yeah, he, he was good. He was getting them all very consistent out of that 64 metre mark. He needs that 65. And if you have a look, we've got the tape out there. The tape will be back out there again this weekend. But, oh, at, on full speed, that looks like it went over, doesn't it? it but does. you see the official just marking it, 64.49, 51 centimetres left. But, you know, he doesn't have to do that flight to Perth now. He's going to be competing this weekend and we'll provide him a nice little headwind to give a bit of loft to that discus. You are a good bloke. <laughs> <laughs> That's how a lot of the great performances at the Jandicott uh, Track Classic, Airport Track Classic over the course of the weekend played out. A quick break. Plenty more on Ats TV with Matt Lynch and Cam Luke next.